Okay, uh, honorable member, uh, raising on a point of privilege, as I understand it, is that correct? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I do indeed rise on a point of privilege with regards uh, to the passing of Government Motion 16. As I alluded to in my earlier remarks on this motion, the privilege of members of the legislature to speak freely on this House floor is one of the most securely held privileges afforded to members. I refer as my first citation, Mr. Speaker, Erskine and May, 24th edition, page 203. And I quote, parliamentary privilege is the sum of certain rights enjoyed by each House collect collectively as a constituent part of the High Cor Court of Parliament and by the members of each House individually, without which they could not discharge their functions and which exceed those possessed by other bodies and individuals. Further, from the same page, and I quote, certain rights and immunities, such as freedom from arrest or freedom of speech, belong primarily to the individual members of each House and exist because the House cannot perform its functions without unimpeded use of the services of its members. I would argue with greatest, the greatest respect, Mr. Speaker, that Motion 16, as debated and passed in this House, constitutes a direct breach of the privilege of free speech in this House. Many points of privilege have been argued in this House, Mr. Speaker, but the charge of infringing on the privilege of free speech is indeed very dire. I recognize that. And I trust, Mr. Speaker, that you also are aware of the gravity of the precedent you are setting. To correct, or sorry, to quote directly from Beauchene's, the second citation is section 75. It reads, the privilege of freedom of speech is both the least questioned and most fundamental right of the member of parliament on the floor of the house and in committee. Now, the reason that the privilege of freedom of speech is so fundamental is that it deals directly with the ability of the member to perform their duties. Now, if a member is precluded from speaking on the issues that affect his or her constituents, then that member is being obstructed in discharging the duties that they were elected to do. Now, leaving aside the issue of whether or not the members opposite believe that the question asked by the member for Calgary Hayes was unethical. He enjoys, as every single one of us do, the privilege to speak in this House about issues that matter to our constituents. Citation 3, Mr. Speaker, page 222 of Erskine and May states, subject to the rules of order in debate, a member may state whatever he thinks to be fit in debate, however offensive it may be to the feelings or injurious to the character of individuals, and he is protected by parliamentary privilege from any action for defamation, as well as from any other question or molestation. I would argue that the motion and debate here today was clearly in contravention of exactly this. A further quotation from the same page, the Speaker, having claimed and statutory recognition having been granted to the privilege of speech, it becomes the duty of each member to refrain from any course of actions prejudicial to the privilege which he enjoys. So, Mr. Speaker, I seriously, seriously question whether what transpired in this House just now and last week with regards to Motion 16 could be interpreted as anything other than prejudicial to the privilege of free speech. I would like to be respectful of the member's time, Mr. Speaker, so I will end my references there and I will simply say that I believe we have demonstrated a prima facie case of breach of privilege, and I urge you, encourage you, implore you, and thank you 
for making the prudent ruling here to protect and preserve the privileges of every one of the members of this House, legislatures, parliaments here and around the world within the Commonwealth. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, the uh, Honourable Member uh, um, for the third party has raised uh, uh, a question of privilege, which is, of course, a very serious matter. Mr. Speaker, I was unaware that uh, this point of privilege was coming forward, uh, and I would respectfully request uh, uh, time to uh, prepare my response um, and, and with the greatest of respect uh, ask that uh, we be allowed to reply to this uh, point of privilege um, tomorrow. Honourable members, um, um, the points of privilege are always very, very serious in this House. Um, and. Um, the particular point of privilege being raised today, I too would, I would like to have some time to look at the issues. Uh, I want to also reflect upon the rulings that, uh, that I granted earlier uh, with respect to this subject matter. Uh, and so I would uh, like to defer the matter onto a future date, uh, uh, which uh, we will bring the matter back for discussion. And at that time, other members uh, may wish to make some points uh, with respect to the latter as well. Um, so I think for today, uh, I would uh, leave that matter there. And